Madam Chair, I wanted to um, uh, just pull this just for a um, matter of discussion. This is in regards to seeking proposals for an adaptive, adaptive reuse of the old Monterey County Jail, which is just across the walkway from these chambers. And just in, uh, in, um, in wanting to um, let our community know some of the history of the old Monterey County Jail, there was no better way than to, to do that than to, um, before we open it for public comment, but to show some of the national news clips, they're only about a couple minutes each, or maybe a minute and a half each. But these were um, uh, news clips of what happened at the jail um, back in 1970 when labor leader Cesar Chavez was incarcerated just a few feet from here. The, the three clips are one of Ethel Kennedy, the widow of uh, Robert Kennedy, came in early December of 1970 to visit Cesar Chavez. The second is a visit by the widow of Dr. Martin Luther King, Perez Scott King, who came here to Salinas to visit Cesar Chavez. And then the last is when he's released from jail. And it's interesting because you're able to see his description of our old jail here in Salinas. And it, and it puts into context the historic significance of why this um, old jail is important. Um, there's only a few historic landmarks of the farm worker rights movement in the entire state of California. Two are in San Jose, the Guadalupe Church, where Cesar began organizing with Fred Ross um, and his hometown, his neighborhood home, I should say, in San Jose, is also a historic landmark. The other two are in 40 acres in Delano, and the last is in La Paz, um, just outside of Bakersfield in Tehachapi. The national headquarters it recently became a national monument by President Barack Obama. But the only other historic landmark, and the only one on the Central Coast, is this jail just across from here. So uh, um, if you could play those. Small clips, please. In California, the leader of the farm workers, Cesar Chavez, has been in jail for more than two weeks because of a boycott or less. Since Chavez was jailed 16 days ago, the farm workers who were in him have kept a 24 hour a day vigil outside the jail. Two weeks ago, Ethel Kennedy came to join This weekend, it was another widow, Coretta King, who was the wife of Martin Luther King. She and Chavez talked about Nana Miles and the influence that her husband had on the farm workers and their cause. She came out of the jail to make some constant comments about President Nixon and his concern for the poor. Our economy is approaching the trillion dollar mark, and with the trillion dollar economy, which the president seems to be very proud of, there is still poverty and hunger and racism in this country, and that we know one has a right to feel proud of this achievement until we have wiped out the poverty and the hunger and even the racism that exists in this country. Mrs. King said all protest groups should unite in a common cause to remedy injustice in this country. Chavez still has no plans to end his weather's boycott, so he'll remain in jail, waiting for action on an appeal. That honor NBC News in Salinas, California. For such then and as let us boycott, farm unionizer Cesar Chavez has emerged from jail to compare conditions on the inside with those his men face on the outside. Richard Thrumkill reports from Salinas, California. <laughs> began gathering across the street from the Monterey County Jail as soon as word got around that Caesar was going to be released. They've been keeping vigil here ever since December 4th, when Chavez was arrested for refusing to stop boycotting one of Salinas' big lettuce growers. Now, the state Supreme Court has set him free on appeal. Chavez looked tired and weak, but still had his sense of humor. The jail reminds me of some of the uh, labor camp, the uh, the uh, that doesn't work, the uh, the leaks in his work, the very cold, the leaks in his rain, it's very damp, lighting is very bad. I would suggest to the citizens of Monterey County to go to the jail, this is not great. <laughs> Charlotte is bound to keep 
keep his lettuce boycott going until Salinas growers are willing to sit down and talk. In the long run, uh, no one wins. No one wins really in this long struggle, and we're not. We're not. Uh, Contrary to public opinion, we're not uh, crazy about boycotting and striking. We're much rather negotiate. And so we're inviting the Gory community uh, in the spirit of peace and the spirit of, of this other case to sit with us and to begin negotiations and to do it right away. Cesar Chavez still has to convince the California Supreme Court to keep him out of jail. But now was a time for reunion and a holy mass of thanksgiving and then to Delano to spend the holidays with his wife and children. Richard Crowell, CBS News, Salinas. Cesar Chavez, the California farm workers leader, is in the Salinas jail because he refused to call off the breakout of the local lettuce grower. Last night, Chavez had a visitor. This is Ethel Kennedy, the widow of Senator Robert Kennedy, who came to the jail to see Chavez. The followers of Cesar Chavez have gathered each night across from the jail where the crime has been built on a pickup truck and prayed for their leader's release. Last night, Ethel Kennedy joined the vigil because her husband, Robert, had been an early and strong supporter of the Fire Workers Union. They cheered when she arrived. Across the street, 200 anti Chavez pickets moved and jeered. Most of these people were the children of growers and rival Teamsters Union members. After Mrs. Kennedy had gone into the jail to talk briefly with Chavez, there was some minor scuffling around the corner. from both factions argued over a flag driven by a supporter of the farm workers. Someone was hurt, the tension remained high. Mrs. Kennedy went out of the back door and left town. The farm workers marched off, confident to Jillian Chavez as one of new support in the nationwide boycott of lettuce. Now they're NBC News report. This is NBC Nigeria, Monday, December 7th, 1970. And that's all we wanted to show. Um, last January, we had the State Historic Preservation Officer, Julian Blanco, come visit and meet with staff about the future of the jail. Um, I think she indicated that you know she supported um, not demolishing, but, but pursuing other possibilities of the jail. And so it's in that kind of spirit, having the State Preservation Officer seeing some of this historic significance that took place there. Uh, but there hasn't been a formal process to pursue an RFP to see if there is uh, private uh, developers, private parties that might be willing to um, uh, look at the project that uh, and find a, a repurposing it um, either through a public-private partnership or some other way of financing this. I think the city, the county staff has done a lot of work over the years looking at all possibilities and fleshing those out. But this is one that we still haven't fully explored, and that's why we're pursuing uh, this referral. And I'd uh, love to hear from the community about that. I have two speaker slips for this item. Jeff Beacom and Nancy Runyon. So we'll do Jeff first and then Nancy. My name is Jeff Beckham, and I am a member of the Alliance of Monterey Area Preservationists who have been uh, a part of the um, process of trying to find a way to save this uh, important historic monument for decades now. Um, and uh, Nancy, who's the head of our organization, will uh, give a little more information about our background. But um, to me, those, uh, those video clips that were shown show that um, this, is, this is not something that should be lost or can be lost to the community. The, uh, we, you think of uh, any of the, well, I, I think of, of when I came to town in 
And John Steinbeck still hadn't been really fully recognized in Monterey. Well, it didn't take very long in the last couple of decades for that to change as the, uh, the people recognized how important his contributions to the community are. Um, I think the same thing has happened now with Cesar Chavez, but we have the opportunity to save this important aspect of uh, Monterey County and Salinas' uh, history, and indeed California's the nations. This is a national historic landmark based on Cesar Chavez's uh, time spent at the jail. And I don't think we should just let that go. You realize the, well, when I saw Credit Scott King, talking about the issues she was dealing with then. I don't see any change. This is exactly the same issues we're dealing with now. And if we just simply wipe away big parts of the history of that fight that's continuing today, we lose great parts of our, our national discussion. And I thank uh, Supervisor Alejo for bringing this forward so we can really begin this discussion. But the, the jail is an important, something important we cannot lose. And um, I want to uh, call your attention to a number of the uh, of, of visuals that I'll put on this now that are jails that have been turned into restaurants, hotels, uh, meeting rooms, and so I'll just show you those quickly uh, all around the country. So, um, here we go. This is Boston. This is an old jail that was turned into a five-star hotel. Nancy can really do this better than I. Uh, this is in Pittsburgh, another hotel that was uh, uh, turned into uh, an arts village. Another hotel in, uh, turned into a hotel in jail in Boston. <coughs> In Salem, these are all community assets now, and we're thought of as something to be thrown out initially. And as the last one, this is another in Boston. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you, Nancy Runyon. Good morning, supervisors. I'm Nancy Runyon. I'm the president of the Alliance of Monterey Area Preservationists. And we're a consortium of preservation groups and heritage associations all over Monterey County. And we were formed in 2004, and one of our issues we were dealing with at that time, and one of the reasons we formed was preservation of the old Monterey County Jail. <coughs> I really want to thank Supervisor Alejo for for requesting this request for proposals. It's very important. It has not been considered in the past. And this is a way to preserve the jail, bring economic benefit, educate citizens, and be beneficial to the county. Um, the, uh, see. We're in strong support of his proposal, and we'll do everything we can to help. Um, the jail is on the National Register of Historic Places, and it's given national significance. Less than 10% of the National Register properties have national significance. Most of them are local, and some of them are statewide. This is national. This is the National Register nomination, and it, it is a large document, as you can see. It's uh, not a small thing. Some of the National Register nominations are just a few pages. This is a book. So the National Park Service is also creating a Cesar Chavez National Park, and it will span two states, from San Jose into Arizona. And Salinas, I think, would want to be a part of that to celebrate this history. This was the pivotal turning point for the farm worker struggle. It was his incarceration in this jail. It's very important. Aside from that, it's a beautiful building. It's not so pretty in the, on the back side, as you can see as you walk out the, the front door here. But the front is actually gorgeous. And it's a massive, large building that it's no coincidence that a lot of the local groups like Measure Z and other initiatives choose that as the backdrop for their crowd gathering. It's an important symbol for all of us. And in closing, I'd like to read a quote from my favorite quote from Cesar Chavez. It's, Preservation of one's own culture does not require contempt or disrespect of other cultures. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. And um, next, I will read an order. Uh, Joel Panzer, 
and then John Huerta, and then Juan Martinez. Good morning, Chair Adams, members of the board, Joel Bozers. Um, I was with uh, the Lady and Sales, the co author of the National Register nomination, and I would note that um, in addition to the sites that uh, Supervisor Alejo had referred to, this was the first site associated with Cesar Chavez that was reached this level of historic significance and was nominated to the National Register. Uh, brought worldwide attention to the farm labor um, struggles. And the broadcast you saw, there were five separate national news broadcasts that uh, put, put focus on, on not only the jail, Salinas, but Chavez's struggle for uh, uh, labor benefits. Um, I guess I, I echo the, the points you heard from the other speakers. Um, I'm from full support, I, I would respectfully request that the, the board um, uh, go ahead with staff recommendation and uh, put out an RFP for adaptive reuse. In the staff report, uh, the reason I suggest that is um, there's several options. The options that the board is currently proceeding down is to demolish the jail scheme one and create a landscaped area at a cost of over $3 million. I want to say the EIR that has not yet been budgeted but will be coming up in the future might be, and it could be 150, it could be 300,000, I can't recall the number. Uh, the last time the jail was uh, proposed for demolition, there was litigation, and I don't know the amount of staff time that was put in, uh, but I think there was attorney's fees awarded uh, of about 150,000. So, so the point is, is we should not go lightly into the demolition mode. Given the costs that are available, I think this is a very cost-effective approach to determine if, in fact, there are willing um, parties out there that can find an adaptive reuse without cost to the taxpayers, you know, based on the, the, the dollar values here. So again, I appreciate the fact that this has been scheduled for this discussion, and I uh, strongly encourage the board to approve the recommendation as presented in the staff report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John Puerta. Madam Chair, Board of Supervisors, good morning. Thank you for this opportunity to support uh, item number 25 and staff uh, recommendation on this item. As an eight-year-old, I was out there on those uh, brought back memories. I wasn't involved in that scuffle, for the record. Um, but um, I was out there, my dad, Juan Huerta, was a United Farm Workers representative and an employee of the United Farm Workers in 1970. This was his first year I was out there as a second grader. Uh, many nights uh, with um, the um, events out there. It's a very uh, significant event in the United Farm Workers history. Uh, it, it is true, it, it was a pivotal point, but it'd be great if we could preserve this tradition or this history of part of Salinas in the Monterey County, and appreciate uh, Supervisor Lego bringing this forward today. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you. Juan Martinez? Uh, thank you, good morning. Uh, my name is Juan Martinez, Gonzalez, California. Uh, I'm here in support of uh, Mr. Lego's uh, proposal to have an uh, RSP uh, put out and uh, fully support uh, saving our history. Uh, the farm labor history of Monterey County goes back since the Spaniards. So it's not a thing about Filipinos, blacks, or, or, or Latinos being uh, put to work out in the agriculture fields, but it goes all the way back to the Spaniards. So the struggle's been long, it's been hard, it's been, it's been a, a real struggle for, for history, for all of us to come together and, and realize that we are our community. We are, you know, like they say about what you eat, right? You are what you eat. Well, here we are. I mean, uh, we are our community. We have all these different combinations of, of cultures and stuff. And I think it will just enhance our, our community, our, our uh, even as a, you can use it as a hook, to just to, to, to get the tourists to stay in Monterey County, stay in Salinas, and enjoy the, the beauty and the diversity we have. Uh, we have Taylor downtown here that's going to draw a lot of people and they're all going to want to see what's happening here at the old Monterey County Jail because it's such a rich history. So uh, as they did with uh, John Steinbeck, he got chased out of town and wasn't liked very much. So it's a Chavez with the same kind of uh, respect and stuff he had for the workers, did the same, and he was uh, incarcerated. So Monterey County has a great history of the struggle of farm workers and very proud to be working along with ag industry to make ag all it could be and, and to employ its people. And uh, that's what it's all about, and keep people safe, because it is hazardous out there. Try it and see if you like it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your remarks. And now I have Wes White. Uh, West Bison, Lewis 
resident. Um, very pleased to see this on the agenda and moving forward. Um, thank you for that. I actually got introduced by Alejo and Martinez to the jail, and so I, I love it. You know, I've, I've seen it in the voter um, 50 year anniversary of the voting rights uh, with, with uh, Joaquin Avila. Um, was the first time. And, I mean, these, these guys already have a rich history that Martinez has a whole yeah. gosh, warehouse full of just rich history of, of what's been happening. You know, there's all these people that have been a part of this, and, and it deserves a home. And this uh, this jail is an excellent museum piece of it. put a piece of that in there, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it happen. Thank you. Uh, and now Salvador Munoz. Good morning, Salvador Mujos. Thank you, Luis Alejo, for bringing this item. Uh, I have been asking since the beginning to have this opportunity uh, for the reuse of the building. AHA, which originally started uh, in this uh, preservation and now has merged with AMAP, um, and we are working in, in synergy to have a good reuse of the building. Uh, actually, on record, I, I've been, I've been um, supporting the building more by its architecture than his, historical. I knew that if we go by the historical uh, activities in, in, in this building, is not only Cesar Chavez, but also uh, a lady who was uh, raped and she make a history of changing the laws. The women have the right to to defend themselves, even to kill the, the perpetrators. And it was here in Salinas. And also items about history so of, us, of uh, John Steinbeck writing stories about you know in and out of the of, of, the, of the jail. And and also advantages for this, it will be the, it, it will increase tourism. Because visitors to the city of Salinas are always looking for historical sites, especially for it, because we are an agricultural town, and uh, and and we have a, a rich history of innovating our agriculture techniques, and and this is to to the backgrounds of all the different peoples who have uh, who have. Uh, Put themselves in the in the techniques and technologies into into what we have today. That we are going to more digitize and automate it. Um, this building can be uh, reused in in a, in, in a very uh, actually seems to be very complicated due to the studies, but actually it's not that difficult. Uh, we can use in phases as an example. The front part can easily be used. In, with very little economical uh, cost due to the only thing we have to do is ramping and things like that that we can make it work. And then we can work on the back later. And, and that will be a very feasible reuse. That can anyone can take a, a, an office or, or, a, or, or a cultural or, or, uh, or uh, an arts use in, in, that, in that space. And as a note, also another important item is that foundations from the Kennedys and, and the Martin Luther Kings, they're waiting for this opportunity to have somebody to take the lead for the reuse so they can start getting funds for, the, for this particular building. And, um, and I wish all of you can give that opportunity so we can ask the community to have uh, the reuse of this historical structure. Thank you very much for your comments. And then I have Bill Carruthers. I'm very proud of the fact that I helped drive nails into the coffin of this unbelievable boondoggle of an idea several years ago. I hope I'm successful in doing the same thing today. The Monterey County Historical Society never has recommended that this building be put on the National Historical uh, Registry. It was done by a combination of rather bogus groups formed together for the occasion. Had the uh, EIR or the original demolition project met any kind of standard at all, 
this eyesore pestilence and waste from the past would have been long gone. It was a bad EIR then that saved this, uh, this pestilence and so forth. Uh, former Supervisor Armenta, uh, Supervisor, uh, one of his aides, his, uh, Alejandro Chavez, no relation to Caesar, went all the way down to where the Caesar Chavez family lives, and they said, we want nothing to do with the preservation of this <coughs> monument to the brutality of our father. That's how they feel. My suggestion for this, uh, this property is to, uh, to work to carefully, it's been carefully, very carefully uh, recorded in documentations and photographs. The, the, all of the uh, architectural features of it have been meticulously recorded. And if someone in the a distant future wants to recreate that abortion of construction, uh, they fools can do so. Please don't make Monterey County the fool that uh, preserves this hideous memento of the terrible, terrible attitudes we had in the past. Is there any other member of the public that would like to address item number 25? Thank you very much. And um, your plan, I, I, I have some comments. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I have some strong feelings about this. As far as I'm concerned, it's an ugly eyesore right in the middle of the government center as it exists now. And I, I hope we, uh, Supervisor Salinas and I, have tried to find some uses for this and we've worked on it. So it, it hasn't that we've tried not to work on it. I, I, I'm ho hoping that maybe this will cause someone to come up with the money to, to do something with it, but I have some real questions whether you can really do something with this. And as it is now, you walk out the administration building and it looks like a dark alleyway of, a, of an urban slum. And it's, a, it's not what we want for the entry to our government center. Uh, the building has narrow rooms. They're straight up. Uh, you can't remodel them because they have 20, uh, at least 20 inches of concrete, uh, uh, reinforced concrete. It's dangerous, it's full of mold, and it's asbestos, it's unsafe for anybody to go in there. From a historical standpoint, I didn't have to look at those videos to see it. Uh, I was in the middle of the strike force along with Captain Walt Scott back in those days. Uh, when those riots were going on, but we were standing in my office, uh, which is right across the hallway. I was in the district attorney's office at the time, right across the hallway from, uh, or the alleyway from the sheriff's department. So we saw all that going on, and that was uh, at a time when no one, none of us, we were so busy trying to keep the peace, none of us recognized what a historical thing uh, we were witnessing with the. Uh, labor movement and, and uh, have the labor movement uh, evolved to the farm workers. Um, but having said that, there were a lot of other things that happened at the jail. Cesar Chavez being part of that jail brought the recognition of what a terrible place it was to house people in, and that helped lead to us being able to get a new jail uh, in place. But before that time, there were many atrocities that occurred in there, of gang rapes of young people, uh, I prosecuted several of them, as did uh, some of my deputies. Uh, gang attacks. Uh, there were two sheriff's deputies that were badly beaten right there by two escaped murderers, uh, Steve Holt, Abraham Donnelly. So you remember that as, a, as a part of the negative history of it. Uh, we were so busy with uh, trying to keep the peace. Uh, when it finally resolved, I dismissed 230 misdemeanor trespassing cases uh, that were clogging our, our system trying to get something done. I think it would be good if we come up with some solution that honored 
Cesar Chavez and labor movement. Uh, we have looked at this, and I frankly think the only viable solution is to tear down the building and make a park in memory of Cesar Chavez and have it the entryway to the Monterey County Government Center. And if there's a way to preserve part of the facade uh, for that park, uh, I think that makes sense. I know there's some been some discussions with the Cesar Chavez Foundation. I think they felt that was a, a, a viable thing. But trying to do something with that building, I think, is going to be next to impossible. But maybe someone will come up with better ideas than what we have. But like I said, C C Supervisor Salinas has worked on this for some time. So. <laughs> Actually, initially we thought that the, in order to keep the process going to make a decision was to get to the EIR and, and figure out what some of the alternative uses would be. And certainly, I mean, anytime you go into an old building and try to rehab it, it's very expensive. It's never economical. We've tried uh, rehabbing this courthouse next to us, but it escalated from 17 million to 70 million. We've tried the old Alisal Hospital, where we have a youth center now. It gets very expensive, so we have to be mindful of all those uh, costs that come up because somebody's got to pay for it. And so it's never economical, but it is an important building for our community, for the history of this county. So one of the things that, that I think makes sense for us to do this, and I thank Supervisor Alejo, because we attended, I attended a meeting with Ms. Blanco from the State uh, Preservation Department, and one of the things she indicated is that we don't usually interfere with the local decision making, but we do look to see if they did their due diligence. And part of that was looking at a readaptive reuse of that building. Have you looked at going out to see if there's any private sector interest in spending money and, and rehabbing and re to, re to be able to reuse that building. So that's the component that I think we were missing. This will get us that, to see if there's interest out there. And certainly from my perspective, if somebody can come in and turn it into whatever it could be used for, whether it's a child care center, you know, museum, whatever it is. Let's see if they're interested in investing their dollars. Because certainly, let me tell you, this afternoon we'll be looking at our county budget. We've got a deficit coming up this coming year. It'll probably get worse in the future year. So we don't have the resources now for capital projects that something like this could cost if we did a full rehabilitation of the building. But for now, I think this makes sense, and this will get us an idea of what's going on there. And I certainly encourage the preservation groups out here that have big partners, that try to be partners, to help us look for grants that are out there. If they're not profits, they have access to certain areas that they can look to, to be able to uh, put something in this, uh, in the funding source so that we can come up with a beautiful project here that recognizes the history of, of the farm worker movement here. It says that, it, and I happen to have walked with says that I was a striker out there in the 70s, but we were dealing with a general strike in 1970. I was here with them when we handed out the first pension checks under the Robert Kennedy uh, Retirement Fund and Pension Fund. So he's a very important figure for our community, certainly for us. Uh, Mayor Huerta, or former Mayor Huerta, indicated he was here. So it's, it's important. Nobody wants to minimize that. And so whatever ideas come out that come out here are not meant to somehow minimize or say that we don't care about that history. We do. We just want the community to work with us to understand what the costs are. And as we look at some of those alternatives, that we come together and appreciate the difficulty sometimes that it is to use money for an old jail that, as you heard Cesar said, you know, build a new one. Maybe he would have said, why don't you put this into taking care of farm worker children or build more farm worker housing. So that's the way in balancing that least I'm trying to do as we look at what to do with, with this, uh, this old jail. Thank you very much. Thank you, Supervisor Sinas. Supervisor Parker, any comments? Uh, just a quick uh, comment that this has, this discussion has been going on for a number of years, and uh, we have, I know this board has been interested in finding ways and working with the community to uh, see if there's a way to keep this uh, jail as part of our uh, local um, government architecture, uh, as well as um, honoring the, the history that has um, happened there. And um, I actually um, am glad that we have uh, this more formal relationship that is being um, uh, put out there because I think it was informal, things, you know, uh, didn't work out, we moved along with the, the um, Page and Turnbull report, um, and uh, so I, I do think that this will give us an opportunity to see uh, if there's a way for uh, the community to work with us to, um, to preserve this, uh, this jail, uh, which I think would be, would be preferable to, to tearing it down. So, um, I thought the I thought the the book had been written on this. I thought it was done, um, but uh, it looks like because we decided to do the environmental impact report um, after the East and West Wing uh, renovation, uh, there is this window of opportunity to see if uh, there's another option uh, at this point. So um, I'm pleased to support this item on today's agenda. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thanks, Supervisor Parker. Supervisor Lego. Yeah, just to uh, close on my behalf, I, this also has uh, personal significance to me and my family. Um, Judge uh, Phillips mentioned his history um, um, during that time, but it was also the history of our families. My grandfather was probably with um, John Huerta's dad on the other side. My grandparents were one of the first uh, five families to join the farm worker rights movement in 1970. In fact, if you Google uh, Cesar Chavez jail, two photos will pop up at the very top. One, he's jailed outside of his cell. The second one is a photo of two women walking with Cesar's head. Their office used to be on East Dallas cell, off of in East Salinas, and they walked from East Dallas cell down to West Dallas cell to turn himself in after the arrest warrant was put out for him. In that photo, and I have it in my office right above us, there's uh, two women. One is my aunt, late aunt Irma Alejo, uh, who's, who's standing to his right and his left. It's a, my grandmother's good friend, you know, Sensia Cobos from Watsonville. Two women walking side by side as Cesar's going to turn himself into jail. For me, that was um, just showed what kind of person Cesar was. We had two strong women at this historical moment. The only time that he was ever jailed was right here, a few feet away from us. And, um, and But the second thing, beyond personal uh, connection with my family, and that moment in history was preserving history for our future generations. Because once it's demolished, it's never coming back. And I don't care how many photos you have, how many photos you have, it'll never be the same for our children and grandchildren and their children to come back and be able to see this historical place, to feel it, to look, take a photo on the outside or walk inside and, and see the, his actual jail, see the location where Ethel Kennedy and Curtis Scott King sat down with him during those historical moments. Once it's gone, it'll never be there. Just imagine if we said the same about the places where Dr. King had his historical moments. If we tore them down today, we could just replace it by having some nice picture. That's not the same if we're trying to preserve important American history for our future generations. And for me, that's, that uh, overarches everything else. It's worth doing it. We didn't see in the video, but right before Susette, or right after he's talking about the jail, he did compliment the Monterey County Sheriff deputies because he said they, they treated him very well in the jail. And I, I thought that was very significant. Here he is incarcerated, coming out, but he's complimenting the people um, who took care of him while he was jailed. Um, uh, and, and the concerns about mold and asbestos, I mean, that was the, the, the story about the East-West building. That was the story of our courthouse. And we somehow are able to preserve this beautiful architecture, these historic buildings for our future generations. and, and and for me, those are examples why we can do it. Yeah, there's a significant cost, but we haven't explored what other possibilities might be out there uh, that is demolition. The last thing, when Julie, the historic, historic uh, preservation officer came out, and after hearing her comments, and after re looking at these videos, and one of those videos had Walter Cronkite and reporting about the news in Salinas, um, for, for me, I just, I just don't see a judge agreeing to grant an order to demolish the only historic landmark for farm workers, a historic, uh, significant place for Latino history, labor history, civil rights history. Um, I just don't see that happening. So when that became clear to me, I said, we just have to pursue this other route, see what other possibilities out there, because we haven't done. Two years ago, Mr. Panzer asked for, for, um, uh, for the county to provide something in writing, whether they would explore this option, and, and they were turned down. Here we have an opportunity to flesh that out, it is, it's not, I'm, I'm agreeing, it's not an easy thing. As Mr. Salinas said, these projects are expensive, but we, uh, until we fully explore that and see what possibilities out there, we, we can't turn down one possible avenue um, when it hasn't been fully explored for our future generations. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Alejo. I think we all have our own personal stories of things that we did during that time. I was doing something very minor. I was an actress in a film that um, the support of the great strikes. So, you know, we've all got our hand in it in a little bit. Um, so, at any rate, that ends our discussion on item 25, and we'll be taking all three of the. Uh